Hey guys, look, I wanted to try something different. I know last week, uh, this past week, those of you that were watching, we, uh, our live stream messed up and our, even our screen record of the sermon messed up. And so I know we have some of y'all that just join us online. And so I wanted to at least give you a, a, a brief summary of what was going on last week, what we were looking at in Ruth chapter three. So I thought I'd just share the slides as we go along. I'm going to just talk, trying something new. I haven't done this before with the PowerPoint slide before. Um, but I, I'm just going to, like I said, just give you the, the high points. And um, so I want you to read Ruth chapter three. Uh, and if you read that, if nothing else, you, if you haven't read it, just uh, stop, pause the video, read it, and then come back. And uh, then we'll pick up right here at the beginning of the message. So the points we want to look at um, today is really just four points. And I want us to see first that uh, the first point is the, it, the Naomi took advantage of the situation. Now, as you know, that, you know, she at the end of chapter two, she was uh, very upset and uh, or at the end of chapter one, very upset. And and she has a little hope at the end of chapter two. And now she's kind of taking the reins. And uh, with this this message being decision, there were decisions made by all. And we'll kind of wrap that up there at the end. But Naomi decides that she wants to take advantage of the situation. Um, not in a, And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that she realized that, I believe she realized that God had placed this man, Boaz, in their life and especially in the life life of Ruth so if nothing else she was definitely just taking advantage of the willingness of Boaz uh, if you remember and you recall from chapter 2 um, he was very generous he he showed a lot of uh, what I just like to call one of my favorite words in scripture is that word favor uh, he showed a lot of favor and concern over Ruth and then even in the way that he was sending stuff back home with her um, he was taking care of Naomi as well. He had heard the, the history of these two ladies and he, he was concerned for both of them. So one of the things that Naomi was taking advantage of his generosity and his favor and his concern. Now, I love the fact that this is what Naomi had prayed for in chapter one. She prayed for it for Orpha and for Ruth. And, you know, and when she was praying that, she was sending them away. But remember that Ruth said no. She, she clung to her and stayed with her. Um, so I love, too, that Naomi's concern was for Ruth. Ruth's concern was for Naomi, but Boaz was concerned for them both. Now, I still do. I love the, the, the way that God is working behind the scenes, and that's hence the title of the series. I, I love the fact that it's amazing what God will do when we're more concerned with what others are going through. You see, when we take time out of our schedules, take time out of our lives to be more concerned with the lives of others, God is really going to work something behind the scenes for us. Because, see, even what we do in secret, God will reward and reward us openly. So as you think about that, I, you know, I can't help but be reminded of uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So as believers, we need to especially be on the lookout for opportunities to, to help other believers. Now, just moving right along, not only uh, I want to show a little bit of, of comparison between the situation and relate it to us, and we don't have the willingness of Boaz to take advantage of, but we need to take advantage of the willingness of God. You see, now, if you think about this, if we're looking at Boaz's generosity, favor, and concern, well, how can we not help but think about God's generosity towards us, his favor over us, and his concern for us? If you go to the beginning of chapter 3, you'll see that, that um, Naomi and Ruth were seeking rest. Uh, one of the things that she said, she said in um, verse one, said, shall I, uh, shall I not seek security for you? That was just basically another word for rest. And, and she's saying, should I not find that for you? Well, I wonder, are we seeking rest and security in God? I sometimes wonder if we're more concerned about what God can do for us than what we can do for others or really what he can do for others. 
I wonder, are we taking advantage of his willingness, his willingness to to provide for us so that we don't have to be concerned with that, but we can turn our our focus in helping others instead of having those those selfish thoughts like we so often do. And that goes back to the way that they were concerned for each other. Now, as we move right along, and that really kind of covers the first four verses. But as you move on to verses five through nine, you see some advice from. Naomi and Ruth takes the advice. Now, as you look through those verses, it may seem odd to us, right? But um, she is telling her, she's saying, look, you need to go out and you need to seek out Boaz. Uh, as you go, it, it seems that even as she does follow through with that advice and, and she comes to, to Boaz in the, in the middle of the night and, and you read through the scripture and you see that this is a strange uh, almost for us, it would be a strange thing. Why would you go lay at the feet of Boaz and then uncover his feet? It doesn't make sense to us, but he would have known right away when she said, you know, when he woke up and, and she said, well, cover me with, cover me with your cloak, cover me with your wing, that that was so much more than that. He, she was asking, basically saying, are you willing to marry me? And so what she said is really, that's what I want to happen. I want to marry you. Are you willing to marry me? Now, you know, arranged marriages were customary at the time. And this is almost like a really an arranged marriage that Naomi is trying to set up. But and, and I, I do want to make sure just make a little note here, as I even mentioned last week, that, you know, some people even try to go to, I think, an extreme and think that, well, uncovering his feet was some euphemism for something else. And they they try to make the story more than it than it should be. And and really, it was just literally her laying at his feet, uncovering his feet. You think about this, that there you are. You've been out there, uh, you know, uh, threshing on the threshing floor. You've been out there working hard. Now you're laying up against the grain to protect it or, or nearby to protect it from thieves. And and there you are tired after a long day. It's dark. And, and now all of a sudden there's somebody at your feet. And well, you wake up because your feet are cold because they're uncovered, right? And so you go to cover him up and you find this woman there. And, and that definitely would have startled him. But again, when she says, will you cover me with your wing or garment? That's what she was asking. Will you provide that security that I'm seeking? And the reason she was seeking that security is because she followed the advice of Naomi. Naomi could, I believe, could see that Boaz, there was something more that God, I think she could see that God was working behind the scenes. And see, I think even with that, are we willing to take the advice of godly people in our lives and to listen, even when we don't understand and we truly can see and believe that God is working behind the scenes? You know, I love Romans eight twenty eight that God is working all things together for good uh, for uh, those who are the, the called according to his purpose, right? And so as we think about that, um, just to know that he, he is putting things in place and in order. Now, as you move on, as we compare this to how what advice we should take, uh, we should also be seeking God. Now, she was, Ruth was seeking Boaz for marriage, but shouldn't we be seeking him for that same relationship? Aren't we the bride of Christ and he the groom? Shouldn't we be seeking him to, to be um, together forever? But I have to stop and think there, how are we approaching him? How are we coming to him? Now, I think sometimes we need to look at the way we come to worship him. Sometimes we come with a kind of half, uh, I don't know, half a mind to just that we're just checking a box and that we're just, we show up at church or we even, I mean, even joining online, you know, we just say, okay, well, I'm going to just listen. So in case he says something, or if I see him around, I can, I can mention uh, what I saw in the sermon or something like that. But are we really coming to worship him? You know, when we come to our, our quiet time, are we really worshiping him? Uh, when we come to prayer, are we really worshiping him? We even talked about that in Bible study this past week. Is, is it, is it really something that we're trying to do? with a right heart? Are we worshiping him first and foremost? But see, there's something in the way that we approach him as well, because you, did you notice how Ruth approached Boaz? 
there was a couple of things she did, right? First, she's told to go wash and cleanse herself. Now, I mean, we're thinking on the, the physical sense of her approaching Boaz, but spiritually, we need to cleanse ourselves before we come to God. Now, yes, we cannot clean ourselves up, but what we need to do is say, God, forgive me, right? We need to get rid of the sin. We need to stop the sin, and then we need to ask forgiveness. The second thing is that we see with her is that she uh, anoints herself with oil, and I love the fact that anointing all, and is so often tied to the Holy Spirit and, and how we need to anoint ourselves with the Holy Spirit, right? We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to intervene as we come to worship. Right, we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, also the third thing is is that Ruth changed clothes. She put on her different garments and, and I love how one commentator put it that basically, spiritually speaking, we need to take off the grave clothes and we need to put on the grace clothes. We need to come I would look at it more as clothed with the right heart. That goes with number four, that we approach in the correct manner, and that would be humbly at his feet. The same way that she approached him. The same way that Ruth approached Boaz, humbly at his feet. We need to approach God the same way. Because don't forget, Boaz could have refused all of this. Boaz could have refused to marry. He could have refused to, to as we'll talk about really in the, next, um, in the next sermon, we'll really talk about him being that kinsman redeemer. He could have uh, turned it all down. But finally, the fifth thing is, is that we, see that Na uh, that Ruth had promised to obey Naomi. We saw that in chapter one, and, and that's exactly what she's doing. She's, she said she would basically do whatever Naomi asked of her, and that's exactly what she's doing. She's being obedient. And if we're going to approach God and worship him correctly, we need to be willing to obey his word wholeheartedly. And then I love after the advice we see my buddy Boaz, he took action. He took action. And the first thing he wanted to do, the first action that he wanted to, to really take care of was he wanted to redeem Ruth. He wanted to redeem Ruth. Now, I told you, is you have to look at what the kinsman redeemer, and basically it was, uh, in a nutshell, it's the idea that if a woman had had no children and her husband died, uh, no male children and her husband had died, that he would come in, uh, this kinsman redeemer would come in, the nearest relative um, would come in and marry her and they would produce a child through him, but yet it would carry on through the father. And, and that's kind of that idea. It was, it was, you know, getting that lineage to follow on. Now, uh, again, that I know that concept is, is strange for us, but just understand what was going on at the time. But he knew what she was asking. She knew that he was to be the redeemer, and that's what they wanted, and that's I think that's why Naomi knew ahead of time. I, I just love how he knew exactly what needed to be done. Boaz knew exactly what needed to be done. He immediately, you see that he he blesses her. He he recognizes her heart. He says, "Look, I'm I'm just glad to see what kind of woman you are. You didn't go chase after those young men and." We kind of get from this that maybe he's an older man. In other words, maybe you've chosen wisely. And, and, and not only that, and it wasn't a self-righteous thing, but I think it was, I can see that you were really seeking to be obedient to what Naomi and God would have you to do. He even mentions there that her reputation was as a virtuous woman. Even the description of him in, in the beginning of chapter two is really something uh, that's almost that same word, almost talking of him of, of having a, a virtuous character. But he knew what needed to be done. And then I love the fact that he did not hide the fact that there was a closer relative. We'll really see this in chapter four. But he says, look, I'm there is another one who's closer. So I may not be the one. You know, Warren Wearsby, I love uh, the way he puts things. And he was talking about the fact that we need to know the truth and, and not, you know, just go on believing a, a lie. And I mean, you think about it, if if Ruth believed that he was the nearest one and that he had to be the only one that could do it. Well, he said, no, I need to tell you the truth. And Warren Wearsby put it this way. He said, joy and peace that are based on ignorance of the true facts are but delusions that lead to disappointments. In other words, what he's saying is if we 
we're just going to be disappointed if we continue to believe a lie that is nowhere near reality. I, I guess my favorite part of this really is that Boaz knew what needed to be done, but his love was so great for Ruth. His love was so great for Ruth that he didn't even care. He said, look, if that guy will do it, if the one who's closer will do it, then so be it. But if not, then I will do it. In other words, I love you enough to just make sure that you're taken care of. Now, that's that's an idea. And that's a that's a love that we only see and we can really only experience from God. And really, isn't that the same thing that God once took action to redeem us? He acted when he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. And and just the same. Right. He immediately knew what needed to be done. In Genesis chapter 3, God immediately knew what needed to be done when sin had entered the world. And he already had a plan in place. Even with that, he didn't even hide the fact that sin, just like Boaz, uh, didn't hide the fact that he wasn't the nearest uh, redeemer, the nearest relative, rather. God didn't hide the fact that sin requires death. You know, Scripture tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sin. Then Jesus, because he was completely obedient to God the Father, he was completely obedient to the law as well. And because God the Father was being obedient to his own law, he fulfilled his law through the death of Jesus Christ. In other words, sin had to be paid for one way or another. And the only way it could be paid was by the shedding of blood. It was either going to be death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Right? The gift of God. It was given to us. As Jesus took our place. And God in his justice. Accepts. His justice and his mercy. He accepts Jesus' perfect sacrifice in our place. I love Romans 8.32. That, that tells us that. If God wouldn't even withhold his own son what what do we ever think he would withhold from us and just the same as boaz was ready to do whatever needed to be done god has already done what needed to be done so that brings us to our final point that this word abide right we see it in scripture Scripture as it relates to Jesus, but right now I want us to see that the way that the, the word abide dealt with Naomi and Ruth, how they had to abide in the word of Boaz. In other words, they had to trust in what he said. They had to trust. He said he was going to handle it. They had to trust that that was true. He said he would redeem them if the nearer one, the nearer relative failed. He gave graciously while they were waiting. Did you notice how uh, how she says there as she's loaded down with grain? And this is in verses 16 through 18. As she's loaded down with grain, you see this conversation going on. And it says, well, I couldn't come back empty handed. I really think that's a play on words. A, a play on a thought from chapter one where Naomi said she had returned empty. You know, call me Mara for I have returned empty. I think it was really something that here that she says, look, Boaz wouldn't let me come back to you empty handed. I think it was a sign of what was to come. But in the end, right, they listened to the word of Boaz. They had to trust the word of Boaz. But most importantly, they had to patiently accept his word by faith. And when we think about that and the way that they were abiding in the word of Boaz, it reminds us of the way that we must abide in the word of God. God said he would handle it. God said he would take care of it. God said he would make a way. Don't you don't forget the fact that God is giving us graciously right right now. We look around the world and we think that the that Satan is winning and it may seem as though he's winning the battle, but he's not going to win the war. He's already lost. Look to the end times. Look to Revelation and see what happens. We know that God has already won. It's just waiting for it to completely come true in our time, whenever that may be. 
But while we're waiting, while we're wondering and waiting to see what God, how God is going to work out everything for our good, how God is, is going to work out things in our lives, how God is going to continue to fulfill his word, while we don't always know exactly how, we know that he will. But he gives graciously while we're waiting, just like uh, these ladies were loaded down with with grain and supplies while graciously receiving those gifts from Boaz, we too receive gracious gifts from God. And I love the fact that Philippians 1, 6 tells us that being confident of this very thing, that he who has began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's not done working on you yet. Just abide and trust in the word of God. And just the same as these ladies had to trust in the word of Boaz, we too must confidently and patiently wait for the complete fulfillment of his word. We must patiently wait. But while we're patiently waiting, we can confidently come. See, as we come boldly to the throne, we don't come uh, into God's presence pointing fingers. No, we come humbly at the feet of him, but boldly through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Waiting, begging for his mercy, his grace, begging for his guidance and his will to be done while we're waiting. But we just have to do it patiently. And that's the word we don't like is patiently. But as you come to this kind of closing thought, why? Decision. So all that I've talked about, why? Why decision? Right. I mean, as it pertained to to Naomi and Ruth and Boaz, Naomi had to decide whether Boaz was going to be able to help them out or not. Ruth had to decide if she was going to be content with just the food provisions that Boaz had given, or if she really wanted rest and security with him for the rest of her days. And Boaz had to decide whether or not he was even going to get involved in the first place. But see, as for us, it kind of follows the same line. We have to check and see and see if we're willing to believe that God can redeem us. Do you believe today that God can redeem you? Do you want more in your relationship? If you're in number one, right? If you do you want to believe that God can redeem you? If you're lost and never trusted him as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm telling you, God can redeem you. He's already paid the price. All you have to do is ABC, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in all that he has done. Believe in the gospel. Believe in Jesus Christ and then uh, confess him as Lord, which means you will not live for yourself anymore, but you will live for him. Right? I mean, it's just that easy. Admitting that you're a sinner, knowing that the cost of your sin is death. But see, it comes with also believing that God can redeem you. If you have more questions about that, I pray that you would reach out to me or to another believer. We would be glad to share that with you. The, the second thing is, is do you want more in your relationship? So if you're a believer and you already have that relationship, maybe you've been walking at that guilty distance, do you want more in your relationship? Are you just content just to get some of the grace and, the, and, and some of those, um, you know, like they were getting grain and supplies and provisions? Or do we just, are we just content with that? Or do we want more? Do we want rest and security in him? Do we want, as she tells him, uh, as she tells her in verse 18, just sit still. Are we willing to be still? And that third point of, are we willing to patiently wait? As we're growing in our relationship, are we willing to patiently wait to see how God is working behind the scenes? Are we willing to patiently wait and see what he's going to do? I love the final thing is, as we see in here says that, look, I know, Naomi says, I know that this man will not rest. Boaz will not rest until it is done. And let me tell you, with absolute certainty, God will not rest until it's done. But you have to decide. You have to make a decision. Will you believe God can redeem you? Do you want more? in your relationship with him? And are you willing to patiently wait? See, that decision's not up to me. Those decisions are all up to you. 
Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, God, use this word, Lord, your word, Lord, to bring lost sinners to you, to bring uh, the redeemed, Lord, back to you in a closer walk. And Lord, help us all to be willing to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, for all things. And it is to you we give all glory and honor and praise. And it's in the precious name of Jesus we ask all these things. Amen and amen. God bless you. We hope you'll be able to join with us this coming Sunday and continue to follow us online. God bless you and have a good day.